Hi, everybody. This is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week, we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager. And we're going to look this week at how do you configure devices and device groups? And how do you manage your devices using Profile Manager? So as I've said in each of the series, uh, this is a part of a series I've done on Profile Manager. So if you're seeing this for the first time and you haven't set up Profile Manager yet, uh, you might want to look for the other screencast in the series so that you can uh, catch up to where we're at in terms of working with our uh, devices. So let me just uh, launch Profile Manager. Again, you can launch it by uh, just clicking on this uh, little link down here uh, on the server screen or by typing in the, the URL that they give you right there for Profile Manager. Now, I've already uh, pulled it up and have it uh, working, and so I'm just going to pull that up right here. And so here we are inside Profile Manager. And you'll notice on the side here I've got Devices and Device Groups. And so here are the devices that I've enrolled. Uh, these are both devices that I enrolled when I did the tutorial on how to enroll your iOS devices and your Macs. And so you can see I've got one iOS device and one Mac in here. And what's nice about this is it gives me uh, a bunch of uh, information about uh, my devices. Uh, so if you've ever come to the point where you're trying to remember uh, maybe a serial number or you know different information about your device, maybe you've gone to an Apple store and they need some of this information and you don't have it, uh, the beauty is if you've got server running, you can pull up Profile Manager and you'll be able to find that information. So let me just show you what uh, is included in here. You can see on the About tab, we've got all of this information down here on the side. And so if I just click on this arrow here for General, uh, you can see that it gives me uh, the type of device, it gives me the capacity, uh, what software version I'm on, gives me my serial number, who the user is, and whether this device is supervised or not. And basically that just means whether it's being controlled uh, directly by a profile that I've set up to be, to make it supervised. And uh, we'll see that when we take a look at some of the profiles. So let me just uh, put that up here. Uh, then you have other details on the device. And you can see I've got the build, the UDID number, the Wi-Fi MAC address, Bluetooth address, model number, uh, all of that. It even tells me the remaining battery life of the device. Even though I'm not in front of it, it tells me uh, the last red battery uh, percent level there, whether I'm signed into iTunes or not, whether iCloud backups on, do not disturbs on, personal hotspot. It really is nice when you're managing devices that you can come in here and just check to make sure, do they have their, for instance, do they have their iCloud backup on? Uh, you can check that uh, that detail and information right in here. Uh, you can even get model numbers and, and all of that information. So again, it does make it convenient by putting it right here in Profile Manager. Let's put that down. Uh, you've got different security settings. So it talks about what hardware encryption there is, if it's uh, passcode compliant, uh, whether there's a passcode present or not, and whether the activation lock is enabled. So again, you can see whether they set up a password on the device or not, and if not, you can either force one to happen, or you can say, hey, how come there's no password on your device? So again, another level of management. Uh, it does show the different restrictions, so any restrictions that you've actually uh, installed on the device will show up here. Uh, I haven't uh, pushed any restrictions yet, so those aren't live. Uh, you can also see all of the installed apps, and this is kind of nice too. Any app that you actually have installed on that device will be reported here. So you can get a real good idea as to whether they're playing, playing a lot of games or whether they're using it for productivity. Uh, so it's a good way to take a look at that device. Let me just pop this down here. <clears throat> Okay, you can also see if they're in certain device groups, which it isn't right now, and then you can also see the certificates that are on the device, and these are the ones that we installed when I did the tutorial. Uh, one is, you know, the trust one, and as well as the, um, you know, the op open directory one. So that information's there. All right, we also have a settings area here where uh, this is where we configure profiles for devices. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, any enterprise apps that you have installed uh, on here. Again, if you're an enterprise user and you bought a bulk license for an application, you can see which applications are installed on your devices. And then you also see activity. And this shows uh, what activity has happened with this device. And you can see that I uh, here's when I enrolled the device. Uh, at what time, and the, I had two certificates that enrolled, and so both of those actions are showing up right here. Uh, so that's how you manage your devices, and you can do both for, the, you know, for your Macs as well as your iPads. Now, you can also manage your devices the same way you manage your users, and you can do that with groups. And so if I just come over here to Device Groups, you'll notice that I don't have any uh, groups in here. But I might want to you know, choose to manage my devices. And so let's say, let's add a device group. Let's click on that, and so it gives me this. And I'm going to say uh, on this one, um, iOS devices. Okay, this is going to be my iOS device group right here. And then I've got to click the plus to add another one, and I'm going to, oops, I need to save the changes first. 
And then I'm going to add another uh, device group, and I'm going to call this Macs. So Mac devices. And that way I could have those separately. Then all I need to do uh, for this is I can actually add, uh, you know, different members to these devices. I could come here and just click, uh, you know, the plus and say add devices and say, okay, so this is on the uh, Mac one. So I'm going to add my Mac here so that that gets added. I'm going to say done. You can see now my Mac is a, is a member of that device. So I'm going to say save. And so now it's changed that. And on the iOS side, I just click a plus here, add device, and I'm going to add my iPad and say done. And there it is in the iOS devices and save. And so this way, it could make it easier for you to manage your devices by their device types if you want to. You could do this by department, by room. Uh, you can set up your device groups however you want, um, but it does allow you to set that up. So let's come in here to settings, and what we're going to do is let's look at how we manage uh, the settings for our devices. I'm just going to click edit and it'll take me in here and you'll notice this is very similar to what you saw when we were uh, managing users uh, you'll notice we've got the same uh, different categories we've got OS 10 and iOS we've got iOS only and then down here we've got OS 10 only and so what I'm gonna do is just uh, kinda go through these I'm gonna show you the ones that really have changed uh, you'll notice all of these are pretty much the same as what we saw uh, in the uh, Mac and iOS uh, you know in, in the tutorial that I did on users and groups you know if I configure this you can see uh, on security and, and privacy the one change is is for general OS 10 I can actually set the gatekeeper setting whether I only want to allow uh, Mac App Store apps or whether I want to allow Mac App Store and identified developers or any app can be installed. Uh, I can set up how I want that and whether or not they can override this setting or not uh, right away. Then I can um, you know, allow the user to change the password or not, uh, all that information. I can also set FireVault uh, in here. If I want to require FireVault, I can set that and then set how all of those uh, settings will be set up when I'm looking at FireVault. Uh, and then privacy is exactly the same as what we did with users and groups. So there's a couple tweaks here that are related specifically to devices. But again, you can see it allows me to customize those things. Uh, when we go into iOS, uh, I've got restrictions, and restrictions on this are exactly the same. That hasn't changed. Uh, single uh, app mode, this is a great one. What you can do is you could actually configure your iOS device to only run a single application. And so it really just sort of locks it into kiosk mode is what you're doing here. Uh, if you look, it has all of your applications that are actually on that device listed here. You just select the one you want, and then you set up the options. And, and these are the settings that are enforced in the single app mode. So you can do use touch and motion and volume buttons. Uh, you can add other things you want to use. Uh, you can also uh, choose which things you want to allow the user uh, to change in terms of settings. And so you can check those things. Once you click OK and the setting is pushed to the device, all of a sudden that iOS device is now only in kiosk mode and the user can't get out of it without you uh, uh, interfacing with it to make the change happen. So that's, uh, that's a great uh, setting that you can do, especially if you're managing kiosk Macs or you're managing Macs for students that, can, that you only want to use one application. Uh, all of this other information is, uh, is the same. Uh, you can see that all of this is what we covered in the users and groups section, so I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, you can see on OS 10 now, uh, we've got, you know, you've got your restrictions on OS 10, and you'll notice these are the same uh, pretty much as what we saw before. Do it by apps, by widgets, by media, uh, you know, sharing and uh, desktop. So same ty types of things that we had on OS 10. Uh, you can see we've got uh, the login window, and this is a great one. You can customize what's seen on the login window. Now, one of the things that I've had people ask me is they want to be able to show the names of their network users on the login uh, window. And so here's where you would add that. You just put show network users right here, and then the users' names will show up on that window so that it's not just an open field where they type in. They could actually just shoot, choose their name, type in their password, and log in. Uh, again, I'd really only recommend that maybe for at home. Uh, in a controlled environment that way, but that is where you would actually set that up. Uh, and then you can say what you want to show on there, you know, administrate, computers administrators, local users, mobile accounts, all of that, whether you want to show the sleep and restart buttons on there. Uh, you can even type a, a message to, do, to be displayed on the, uh, kind of on a banner on the login prompt uh, to give information there. Uh, you also have options uh, on the login window, whether you want to show a password hint or not. Uh, you know, log out users after a certain amount of inactivity, whether you want to allow guests, uh, all of that, you can set those in here. 
Uh, you can also set access. You can allow uh, users and groups that can log into this computer or not. So you can even specify, hey, maybe it's you know the main home computer. I don't want the kids logging in. So these users uh, are the only users that can log in, maybe just myself and my wife, or deny the kids from logging in uh, to this particular computer. So you can set those kinds of settings as well. Uh, and then you can also even run scripts at login or log out. So if you have certain scripts you want to run, you could actually upload those scripts here and they'll run, they'll be pushed to the device and run at login and log out. So a really nice feature uh, added in there. Uh, again, you have your login items. This is the same as what we covered before, mobility, doc. Uh, added in here is software update. And so if you set up the software update service, you'd put the URL here of the machine that has actually uh, uh, downloaded all of the updates that you want all your computers in your network to look at. Uh, I'm going to cover this more when we talk about the software update service. Uh, but this is where you can configure it and push it to your devices right in here. Uh, we also have energy saver uh, preferences in here, and so I can set all of the different energy saver preferences, when, when to put the computer to sleep or the displays, uh, you know, all those kinds of options on desktops, on portables. I can have the battery settings and, the, and power adapter, what things I want to happen when it's on battery or on power adapter, so I can save the battery if I want to. And then I've got the schedule, too, on when to start up the computer, when to start it up, when to sleep it. I can actually set a routine for it. Again, if you're in a lab, it's a great thing to do. You can automatically set when the machines uh, sign off and log off. So there's energy saver. Uh, parental controls, that's the same as what we've seen before. Uh, this one is great. You've got Time Machine, and you can actually configure Time Machine in here, and it gives you uh, a few extra things that you can configure that you normally can't. Uh, you can set the um, backup destination of where your backup folders are. Uh, so they give you an example there of where your backup folders created when you set up the Time Machine service. You can say to backup uh, all the volumes, so any volume that is connected to your computer, uh, it'll back up those, not just the main uh, startup volume, so that's nice. Uh, you can also back up your system files and folders, which are normally excluded. You can include those in the backup. Uh, again, enable automatic backups so that it'll automatically happen like Time Machine normally does instead of users having to intervene. And then you can also enable local snapshots. And this is on your portable devices like your laptops. When you're outside the network and so maybe it's not accessing Time Machine, you can set it up to take snapshots of your computer so that if something goes wrong, they mess up a setting, those backup settings are available and you can just restore from that. And so that is a nice add uh, that they've put in there. And then finally, you've got your backup size limit so that Time Machine doesn't get too big on you. And then anything you want to skip, like maybe you don't want to back up movies or whatever it is, you can add those in here. So again, that's a nice payload. They've added some nice things to it that you can set up for Time Machine. Uh, and then, you um, again, you have the Finder on here, which uh, we've already looked at, very similar to what we saw uh, with users and groups. Nothing different there. So that kind of gives you a, a rundown of some of the unique things that you can do uh, by managing with devices. You can do it by users or devices, but there's a lot of things that you can do to really get your devices set up the way you want them to and then have those changes pushed out to your devices. I'm just going to cancel here uh, instead of load these payloads. So, uh, so that gives you an idea of how to use uh, devices and device groups. Uh, again, if you just to look at the sidebar, if you've got uh, enterprise apps or volume purchases, you can put those in here, store them here, and then have them added to devices. Uh, and under the activity area, you've got active tasks, and these would be tasks that are waiting to be pushed to your devices, and then completed tasks. And you can see here all the different completed tasks that we've had, uh, including the enrollment of my various devices and the fact that they've succeeded or not. So you can track that. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.